Good evening, everyone. You're very welcome to our service of evening prayer. And we begin on page 102 in our book of Common Prayer. We come before the Lord to seek his, his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness uh, for all the wrong things that we have thought and said and done. And so we pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our Gospel reading uh, for this day, uh, reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. Uh, just a few verses. It's reading from verses 34 to 38. So that's Luke chapter 21 and reading from verses 34 to 38. Watch yourselves. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. And every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning all the people came to the temple to hear him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we ask that you would grant us the help that we need to hear your voice speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in our brief gospel passage this evening, we have Jesus issuing the call to be alert and careful so as not to be overcome, to be steadfast and committed. Perhaps it is a call to reflect on what it is that we are anchored to in our lives. The world we live in and the culture which we now find ourselves would seek to throw us off course on our Christian pilgrimage. We can have the power actually to wear us down as we seek to remain faithful in our calling to be salt and light in what seems to be an ever increasingly secular, consumerist and selfish world. The path that the Christian chooses to tread is not an easy one. It is not one that will make us popular, successful or rich in secular terms. But it is one that will make us popular with the only one whose opinion really matters. It will make us successful in terms of how our commitment and service will reap rewards beyond imagining in the kingdom to come. And we have, as our daily experience, the reality of the richness of the joy and peace that comes from having a restored relationship with God through Jesus. Our passage reminds us that there are powers at work that can affect us and leave us feeling that this pilgrim road is too difficult. Our hearts can become weighed down and burdened with worries, concerns and anxiety. As we see a world in chaos, where there is war and famine, poverty, injustice, corruption, where there are evil acts committed 
which cause us horror and shock. And where there exists every manner of disease and illness. Where mental health issues and suicide are at unprecedented levels, even among all ages. It can be so easy to feel overwhelmed, disheartened and discouraged. Jesus calls us then to be careful to not allow the world to get a hold on us. To be alert and watchful and not become complacent and think that we are immune. To be prayerful and keep on guard as it were. To ensure that we stay focused and keep pressing on knowing that it is not a sprint but a marathon that we are running. To keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and the prize that awaits all who are faithful to the end. To be firmly anchored to him enabling us to withstand any and every storm. And to remember, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, neither has it been conceived by the mind of man what God has in store for those who love him. Well, let's pray as we finish. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word to us, which encourages us and warns us in equal measure. Grant us courage and faith in greater measure in these days to stand strong and to be found faithful on that fateful day when you return to bring reward and judgment in equal measure. Amen. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We affirm our faith in whom we believe and in what we believe. So we join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. And the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. In the collect for the first Sunday of Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. 
Amen. In the second, collect at evening prayer. Lighten our darkness, O Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And Father, we pray today, Lord, as we have heard uh, in the news about the rollout of this vaccine for coronavirus, Lord, we pray that this is so. We pray, Lord, that this vaccine will be effective, Lord, and Lord, that it will be made widely available. And Lord, that it'll have the impact in our province and on our people that we hope that it will have. And Lord, we thank you uh, for granting your skill to the scientists and the researchers, the people that have been able to bring this virus, uh, this um, vaccine to us. Lord, thank you for how you've gifted them. And Lord, as we hear as well, just about um, Debenhams, Lord, and it's the amount of people that stand now to lose their jobs, Lord. We know there are a lot of people who are going to, to lose income and who are really going to struggle because of this. Lots of people losing their jobs and maybe lots of people losing hope. And so we pray, Lord, for all who face the thought of being made redundant, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would help them, that you would bless them, that you would guide them to the help uh, that they need. And Lord, in all things, we pray at this time of year, Lord, in Advent, as we think about Christmas and the coming of your Son, Jesus, we pray, Lord, that we would, all of us, each of us, Lord, would open up our hearts and our homes to receive your Son, Jesus, and receive the joy and peace that only he can bring. And indeed, the hope, the hope that our world longs for. Lord, finally, we pray for those receiving treatment uh, at this time, whether in hospital, at home, in care homes. Just pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would strengthen them, increase their faith, Lord. And Lord, that you would touch them, and in your mercy and your grace, Lord, that you would heal them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some words of blessing as we close. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us this night and forevermore. Amen.